Hi, my name is Benjamin. I'm the author of Relearn and Playtime. And I'm really happy to announce that today, Playtime 2, the modern session view for Reaper, is available for the public. For now, it's a better version. But it has been alpha tested already for over four months. Improvements have been made, bugs have been fixed. So when I say it's a beta, it means it's already usable and we are actually not too far away from the final release. At this point, I would like to say thank you to everyone who was actively involved in Playtime's alpha testing. In order to give you an impression how Playtime looks and how you can work with it, I decided to make a video. In this video, uh, I'm going to create step by step a song from scratch. And uh, I will do so only by using the most basic features of Playtime. I mean, I could show you a lot of special features now, but for this introduction, I really want to concentrate on the basic workflow. I won't even touch Playtime's controller integration, which is arguably a very essential part of it, but today we are not going to need it. I will do everything using the built-in user interface, without any external controller. Our first step is starting Reaper. It's important to use a current Reaper version, otherwise Playtime will display a warning message. At this point I have already installed Helgobox, the Reaper add-on that contains Relearn and Playtime. You should now see the Playtime button in the main toolbar. If it's not there, you can add it by going to the Extensions menu, Helgo box and show Welcome screen. Pressing the button adds a new track called Playtime, which contains the Helgo box instrument plugin. It also opens the Helgo box app, showing the Playtime 2 user interface. I'm putting it into full screen mode because I'm planning to work mainly within Playtime today. I already know that for this demonstration I'm going to use a lot of MIDI. That's why I start off with a MIDI template. We now have a matrix of 8 columns and 8 rows. Each column corresponds to a Reaper track. I'm going to start with some drums to get a rhythmic foundation. I press F2, enter a descriptive name for the column and press enter. I could do the same by right clicking the column header and choose rename column or track. Or I could select the track header in the bottom area and change the name in the inspector on the right. Because I started with a MIDI template, the track associated with this column is already configured to receive MIDI from all MIDI devices. Before I can record any clip, I need to record arm the track. I'm going to use the drum sampler battery to get some drum sounds. There is a MIDI keyboard connected and I'm playing around with it. We can hear the drum sounds. As you can see by looking at the visual metronome in the middle of the Playtime logo, Playtime is already playing. By default it's always playing, it's not stopped. But I'm going to stop it now using the hand button. I started again by doing tempo tapping. Now we have something around 60 BPM. I want the song to be quite slow. I'm going to first add some hi-hats for orientation. Not really happy with this take. The timing is awful. This sounds better, but I want it to be super straight, so I press the quantize button. Double clicking the clip opens Reaper's built in MIDI editor. Let's add a little bit more. Something like that. Oh, recording into the second slot stopped the first one. That's not what I wanted. I first need to disable exclusive mode for that column. Let's start the hi-hats again.
Great. Now both clips are playing together. I don't want the bass drum and the shakers to have different velocities, so I just pull them all up to maximum volume. At this point I feel like it's a good idea to save the project. Let's give those two clips different names to be able to distinguish them from each other. The next part I have in mind is a chord progression on the piano. I want to record a real acoustic piano, so this one is not going to be a MIDI take. I have a Zoom H1N handheld recorder connected to my audio interface. I choose that one as stereo track input. Now you can hear me playing the piano. I'm ready to record the progression. Again, I'm not very happy with this first take. And I have to say, it was a bit challenging to press a stop button in time. Fortunately, Playtime offers a possibility to do fixed length recordings. So I choose the length in advance and then Playtime automatically stops recording when it's time. Setting the length alone is not enough. I also need to activate length limited recording. Now you can see the number 8 on the top right of the Smart Record button. This indicates that the recording is limited to 8 bars. As a shortcut you can right click the Smart Record button and change things from there. You can conveniently change the track level directly from within playtime. Now I want to get rid of the lower frequencies of the piano because I want to add a bass later.
we can quick save the project directly from within Playtime. But of course you could also set up automated backups and the Reaper preferences. Now I'm in the mood for a mute trumpet. Let's add contact. Sounds a bit dry, let's add a delay. This quickly gets too much. Actually, I want this trumpet part to be played only once. I can do this by unticking the loop checkbox. This turns it into a one-shot clip. I'm thinking about recording a second piano part to make things less boring. Maybe some triangle percussion can spice things up a bit. This short interruption that you maybe heard when I pressed the quantize button is one of the things that I still want to improve during the beta stage.
And here you can see another thing that I still want to improve, sometimes the track and drop doesn't work. Let's add a synth. Sometimes it's important to wait a bit for the right moment to start the recording. Just as with a real band or an orchestra, you need to find the right entry. Now it's time. This needs some minor adjustments in the MIDI editor. Now I'm going to record audio from an external synthesizer. Turns out I only want half of the recording. Just two bars instead of four. Now I could go ahead and change this sample within Reaper and re-import it, but I can also just change the section length. Time to save the project and make a short break. Let's see what's next. Actually all this time the left part of the Playtime user interface, we didn't really need it. I'm talking about this matrix column or scene column and the master track. Turns out we can hide particular elements of the user interface. Now that we hit the left part, we can see more columns at once. 
There are more things that we can do to make the user interface a bit more pleasant to work with. For example, assigning track colors. For the next steps, I'm going to need the scene column again, because we are going to work with scenes. Scenes are essentially the rows of the matrix, and those scenes can be used to structure the song in a relatively loose way. I'm going to use the upper few rows as a kind of stock, where I position clips from which I can choose. I will use the lower rows to build a song structure. Let's assume I want to start the song with this piano part, nothing else. For this I simply copy and pasted the piano clip to the lower scene. At a later point it's time for the beat and the trumpet to kick in. Here I don't use copy and paste, but I build the scene from the currently playing clips. This little number at the right side of the slot indicates that this slot actually contains two clips now. Hi-hats and main beat. They are played back at the same time, as if they would be one clip. But in reality they are completely separate and you can adjust them as you wish. This is a non-destructive alternative for MIDI overdubbing and it works with audio as well. In future versions of Playtime, it might even be possible to play them back sequentially. I think this part makes a good verse of our song. By the way, whenever you see a stop button in the matrix, you can double click it to make things stop immediately. If you click it only once, each clip will stop according to its stop timing, which you can adjust globally or on column level or for each clip separately. Now let's add a chorus part. Now you can spontaneously jump between different parts of the song. We can now go on with the second verse. Let's add some variation. I think it's a good idea to add a more sophisticated drum beat. For this I'm going to use a drum machine called XO. I found this one fits quite nicely. We already have kicks, so I'm going to mute the ones of this factory preset. 
I will keep the rest. I don't want to use a sequencer within XO because I want to have full control of the beat. So what I did is tracking the MIDI pattern of this beat into a playtime slot. The other thing that's missing is some bass frequencies. Sounds like the lead sound that I used before for playing the high part is also suited for the low part. When looking at the smart record button we can see that the recording is still limited to 8 bars. That's okay, because we can always stop the recording spontaneously a bit sooner. I'm in the mood for playing, so I just record all the 8 bars until the end. Playtime allows you to adjust the volume per clip. This is a MIDI clip. So adjusting the volume actually adjusts the velocity of all MIDI notes in that clip. For this synthesizer patch, a higher velocity also means a higher cutoff frequency and I don't like how it sounds, so I turn it back to zero. I just copied the complete chorus scene to a new scene. As you can see, the name of the scene was not copied. This is another bug that I still need to fix during the beta period. Let's make the drum columns neighbors, simply by tracking the XO column to the left. I need a new column now because I want to record a clip with a bass sound. I prepared a patch for that in Diva. By the way, you can adjust values in playtime using a lot of ways. You can use two finger scrolling on your trackpad, you can use the mouse wheel, or just a conventional click and track. Double clicking usually results in a reset to the default value. Some controls also support text entry via right click. Ok, let's finally record the bass clip. This time I'm going to use the smart record button.
time for another break. I think what we need now is a completely different part. Something like an interlude. Let's do this. I make a little bit more space for a lead sound so we can see all columns together. Again, using Diva as a synth. Plus a little bit delay. With this in place, I'm going to create a part that sounds a bit ambient. This could still need some bass. good enough. The last thing that I still feel is missing from this ambient part is a lo-fi Rhodus sound. It will provide the harmonies and this a little bit fairy tale feeling.
I'm going to use a plugin to add some vintage character to the sound of the rotors. So this is what I have in mind, this a little bit arpeggiated playing. I often record over multiple bars, even it sounds very similar, but I think it gets this more natural touch, a little bit variation. So what happened here is that I lifted the sustain pedal right after the clip started playing. And naturally everything was suddenly dry. Because the lifting of the sustain pedal was not recorded anymore, this shouldn't happen on the next loop. but it sounds like we have another problem. The sustain pedal is not lifted at the end of the clip. Usually Playtime applies some configurable reset logic at the end of the loop cycle. Um, and this usually also includes the lifting the sustain pedal, but in this case it somehow didn't do it. Need to look into that. I just fixed this manually in the media editor. It worked. Let's remove the drum beat. I want it to sound more ambient. And a bit later the drums jump in again.
The ending of the song can be similar to the intro. Solo piano and his signature trumpet. Looks like we have a little scrolling hiccup here. For now, copy and paste to the rescue. Nice. Now that we have a complete song structure, I think it's a good opportunity to show you how Playtime 2 actually works. How does it do the playback? How does it integrate into Reaper? It's important to know that Playtime 2 is completely different from the instrument plugins that you know. It sends MIDI or audio directly to the column tracks. And it doesn't require any routing between the playtime track and the column tracks. It doesn't set up any sends or receives between the tracks. It's possible that I will add the option to use it more like a traditional VST instrument in future, which would kind of turn it into its own audio and MIDI sequencer. But actually the ability to play on tracks directly is much more interesting for, for a session view. And here's another interesting thing. All this time, Reaper playback was stopped. It was only playtime that was playing. However, we can also start Reaper playback and make playtime play synchronized to the arrangement. By the way, you can control Reaper playback directly from within playtime by using the tiny transport buttons in the title bar of the Helgo Box app window. No matter if you use the normal Reaper transport buttons or the ones on the top, Playtime will automatically synchronize to the arrangement playback. When you press stop, it will memorize which clips have been playing. It puts these clips into a so-called ignited state. You know that a clip is ignited if it has this circle around the play button. As soon as you press play again, it will start playing the ignited clips. The next logical step is that we somehow take all these clips that we have in playtime and write them to the Reaper timeline, to the Reaper arrangement, however you call it. What I just did is creating a static export of the complete matrix to the Reaper arrangement. Hmm, something sounds weird. Something is playing that shouldn't be playing. Sounds like some clips were still ignited and Playtime is happily playing them along. I only want to hear the arrangement now. So I double click the matrix stop button and all clips that were previously ignited are not ignited anymore. That sounded better. So, exporting the matrix or single scenes or columns or clips to the arrangement is one way to transfer things to the arrangement. But there's one additional way. Playtime's built-in matrix sequencer. For what we do next, we don't need the inspector on the right or the track panels. That's why I hide them. The matrix sequencer can record your interactions with the matrix and play them back at a later point in time. All you need to do is to press the sequencer record button and start triggering scenes, clips, stop columns. All these kinds of events are recorded. You don't need to be afraid of overwriting anything. When you press the record button, the sequencer will automatically create a completely new sequence. Old sequences are kept and can be played back at any time. Just remember that the matrix state itself is not saved as part of the sequence. That means whatever clips you had when recording the sequence, they are not going to be restored. What I'm doing now is to record the complete song from beginning to end in the structure that I want it to be more or less.
Please note that when I change any settings during recording the sequence, this is not going to be part of the sequence. So these are permanent changes I'm doing here. Oops, I didn't trigger the fairy tale part in time. But no worries, it's always possible to fix this kind of mistakes in the final arrangement and the Reaper arrangement view. This little dissonance you heard is a result of the pitch bend wheel being in a wrong state when triggering the next MIDI clip. I might have to adjust the MIDI material a bit. That's it, that's our sequence. We can see it in the list of sequences. At the moment there's just one. Now I could play back this sequence directly in playtime using the matrix sequencer play button, but instead I'm going to write it directly to the arrangement view by pressing what looks a little bit like a download button. After I acknowledge this warning, playtime writes everything to the arrangement. The complete previous arrangement within the column tracks was replaced. What was not replaced were the regions on the top. In order to avoid confusion, I just removed them now. They are not part of the recorded sequence. At this point, playtime is not involved anymore. We could even remove the playtime track from the project. It wouldn't make any difference as far as arrangement playing is concerned. But usually it's a good idea to keep playtime in the project. Maybe you want to try different clip combinations, you want to record another sequence, things like that. So when we go back to playtime, everything is still there. The arrangement is really a completely separate thing. The clips are not connected. You can make changes here without influencing the arrangement. Except, of course, when it comes to track changes like track volume, this will still affect the column track and therefore also the Reaper track. The last thing I want to show you today is how you can change playtime's appearance. So let's just sit back and enjoy the different themes and some single appearance related settings.
that you see in the window title bar are actually just hard-coded combinations of appearance settings. You can adjust these appearance settings by yourself by opening the Helgobox settings panel. It also contains a few settings that are not changed as part of the theme. For example, the cell dimensions. Look how the user interface structure changes in response to the available height. If we change the global start timing to something more than one bar, you will see an additional guide around the visual metronome. This can help finding the correct entry for songs that use multiple bars as one unit. Even if you hide the navigation part, you can see this additional guide on the top of the window. See the flashing lights? This is Playtime's clip activity visualization. With some color settings you can see this better than with others. You can also choose to switch it off if that irritates you.